Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the McFarlane DC Multiverse DC Direct Page Puncher Mega Figure Gorilla Grodd. This is Gorilla Grodd from a Flash comic that's included with this figure. I'm really excited for this guy. He's the first Mega Figure in the Page Puncher line, and he looks huge. He looks badass, way bigger than the Injustice version of Gorilla Grodd. I got my figure from the McFarlane Toy Store. They put him up, he was already in stock, and he shipped the same day. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see at the top, ages 12 plus, includes exclusive comic book in English language. DC Direct, McFarland Toys. This is how DC Direct is going to live on, and I'm happy to see it logo. It has been a while. DC, Gorilla Rod. Here he is in the package. He has a display stand, collector's card, and a comic book. One side of the package, Gorilla Grodd for the Flash comic, part of the Page Puncher line. Other side, Page Puncher. At the bottom, there's a bunch of credits and there is a barcode, in case that helps anybody. And on the back side, here's Grodd, here's the comic. So with no further ado, let's open him up. All right, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He doesn't come with any traditional accessories, but he has a display stand, collector's card, and the comic book. Before we take a look at those, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So this is Gorilla Grodd, typically a flash rogue, everybody's favorite super smart telepath gorilla, and he's from a flash comic. So let's take a look. Start with his head here, you can see there's fangs sticking out, the gorilla nose. He's got this sort of, not exactly a helmet, or maybe it is, and it's got this sort of gold trim on it. Looks pretty cool. Some orange armor, orange shoulder pads, a little cape coming off the back. It's tattered up underneath. The sculpting and texturing of his fur is just fantastic. He's got some abs here. Looks like single jointed elbow, single jointed knee, typical gorilla feet. It all looks really nice. The sculpting of the fur very well done, and he's massive, just like the first Gorilla Grodd should have been. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. The only thing I really don't like is you can't see the majority of his face. I'm sure it's accurate to the comic here, but I think he would look a lot better if you could see his whole head. Maybe the helmet was removable or something like that. And this guy's so big, I doubt any sort of head swap is going to work. Now let's check out his accessories. He comes with a typical McFarland stand. Black perfect circle. Says the DC on the bottom. He's got one peg for the peggles on his feet. Very thin. Very basic. Now let's look at his collector's card. As you can see, it's a replica of the cover. It's got the entire wave. Gorilla Grodd, Heat Wave, Captain Cold, Flash, and the Atom. Gorilla Grodd. On the back side, there is a description. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause now. Now let's look at the comic. This is The Flash, number one. I believe this cover variant is exclusive to the McFarland toy line. It's in a plastic bag, and I'm probably not going to open it, as I really don't need to read this comic. And I figured it would be better to just keep it sealed. I also wanted to point out that I'm pretty confident all five of these figures are going to come with the exact same comic. That's how the previous Page Puncher wave worked. It would be nice if they at least had different cover variants. Now they've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and its accessories. Now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing at about 8.75 inches tall, which can translate to about 22 centimeters. He's a pretty big boy. Now let's check out his articulation. Starting with his head here, of course, going to rotate from side to side. You can look up and down about that far. Not too much, but not too bad. Can tilt his head just slightly from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint. Goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. Shoulder pads are soft. They move right out of the way. Don't obstruct the articulation. And he's got that butterfly joint. Increase the range of motion and covering up that gap. His elbow here. Can fully extend it out. Goes in about 90 degrees with rotation. His wrist, it's hinged and rotated. His torso is one solid piece. 
this waist, ball joint rotate around, go forward and back. Legs, completely does the splits. Not a ball joint, but a similar type concept. Rotation is non-existent. They go forward, not too much. Back about that far. Single jointed knees, about 90 degree, with rotation. Then this ankle here, forward, back, and rotate, no tilt. Here's Gorilla Grodd, king of the jungle. And here comes Flash, running down the city streets of Central City. He found out Grodd is at a nearby forest. He is going to take him down. Flash comes to a screeching halt right in front of Gorilla Grodd. Didn't take him long to find him. Flash is looking up toward this large, imposing gorilla. Turned out, Grodd had set a trap for Flash. He brings out his gorilla soldiers. And it only gets worse. The Flash is now totally surrounded. He realizes he might have bit off a little more than he could chew. Grodd and his gorilla army begin their attack toward Flash. To be continued in Flash number two. And just cause, here's Gorilla Grodd chasing after a McFarlane Fortnite Peely. He wants to eat that large banana. Now let's check him out. Next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other Gorilla Grodd figures. Here he is, next to the Injustice 2 Gorilla Grodd. I feel like this Gorilla Grodd is far too small. And it looks like they made up for it with this release. I actually ended up getting three of the Silver Platinum Chase Grodds. My intent was to use the gold one as actual Gorilla Grodd, and the three silver ones as some of his soldiers. And here he is, next to a DC Direct Gorilla Grodd. Here's my entire collection of Gorilla Grodd figures. I really wish I had the Mattel DC Universe Classics version as well. Now let's check them out, next to some other McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Since we already checked them out with the other McFarlane Gorilla Grodd figures, here he is next to the first wave of page punchers. These were all based off a of Black Adam comic. I still don't have the black and white version of Black Adam. I imagine the second wave of page punchers consisting of Flash, Adam, Heat Wave, and Captain Cold will come out really soon. Since Gorilla Grodd is a Flash villain, and this one's actually from the comics, let's check him out next to some other Flash figures. Here he is with the DC Rebirth Flash. Probably the most appropriate Flash to pit against this Grodd. Sure, the Page Puncher Flash is actually the one intended for him, but that one's all kind of weird. This is probably my favorite Flash, as he's a modern, iconic Flash. And here, next to the Injustice 2 Flash. Then, next to the DC Cinematic Universe, Ezra Miller Flash. Here's Grodd. Next to the CW's Arrowverse, Flash TV show, Grant Gustin Flash. Then, next to the Justice League Unlimited, Wally West Animated Flash. Here's Grodd, next to the DC Rebirth Wally West Flash. And just cause, here he is next to the recent Dark Flash. And being a Flash Rogue, here's Grodd, next to all the Flash Rogues they've made so far. They're all speedsters. We've got Godspeed, Reverse Flash, Dark Flash, and Red Death. The upcoming Page Puncher Wave is going to give us Captain Cold and Heat Wave although they are most certainly not your traditional versions. Now let's check him out, next to some other McFarlane DC Mega Figures. Here he is next to the two most recent ones, Bane and Necron. Then, next to the Black Adam movie, Adam Smasher and Sabacc. Here he is, next to the Arkham Asylum Killer Croc, and the DC Rebirth Man Bat. And now, next to the Arkham Asylum Titan Joker, and the Rebirth Clayface. Here's Grodd, Next to all three versions of the Swamp Thing Mega Figure. Then, with the Walmart exclusive, gold label mega version of King Shark from the Suicide Squad. And here he is, next to the first mega figures, Steppenwolf and Darkseid from Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now let's check him out, next to some other recently released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here he is, next to the Walmart exclusive, gold label versions of Dark Flash, Shazam, Azrael and Batman Armor and Parallax Health Jordan. Here's Grodd, next to the Court of Owls Talon, and the Rebirth Deathstroke. And here he is, next to the Speeding Bullets Batman, and Batrocitus. Then, with the Blue Beetle and Booster Gold 2-pack, here's Grodd, 
next to the Infinite Frontier Scarecrow, the New 52 Static, and the Future State Superman. And here he is, with the McFarlane Toy Store exclusive, gold label paint variants of the Arkham Knight Scarecrow and Red Hood. Here he is, next to Martian Manhunter, both Classic and Rebirth. Then, with the Target exclusive Crime Syndicate, Ultraman, Superwoman, and Owlman. And now, with all three variations of Lex Luthor in his power suit, here's Grodd, with both versions of the Future State Dark Detective Batman. And here he is, next to Duke Thomas from Tales of the Dark Multiverse, and the Batman Who Laughs dressed as Batman. And finally, here he is, next to both versions of the Zernar Batman, and all three variations of the Infinite Frontier Robin. Now let's check him out, with some other gorilla figures. Here are all the different McFarlane DC Multiverse gorilla figures I have. They're all Gorilla Grodd. And here he is, next to a DC Direct Gorilla Grodd. Then, with all four versions of the NECA King Kong. And here he is, next to Cygor, another mega figure. Here he is, next to a couple of NECA Gorilla Aliens. Now let's check him out, next to some mega figures from other McFarlane lines. Here he is, next to all the different Spawn mega figures. Violator, Overt Kill, Cygor, Manga Spawn, and Bloody Violator. Here's Grodd, with some Witcher mega figures. On the left, from the Witcher video games, and on the right, from the Witcher TV show. Here he is, next to a couple of McFarlane, Princess Bride, Fezzik mega figures. Now let's check him out, next to some action figures from different various companies, to see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise. In case you want to know which lines you can mix them with. Since he's a McFarland figure, they're typically 7 inch scale. This guy's quite a bit larger than 7 inches because he's supposed to be a giant. Let's start off by comparisons. I compare him with some of the large action figure lines I collect and work way smaller. But first, let's check him out with some of his McFarland Toys brothers. In front of you are 5 different action figures, all from McFarland Toys, all 7 inch scale. Then, with some more McFarlane toys, these are from different various video game properties. And now, with some Jack specific wrestling figures, and here he is, with some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures, and here he is, with some NECA figures. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures, and now, with some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers, and here he is with some Mezco 112 collective figures, then with some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures, and here he is with some Mapex figures, then with some Hasbro Marvel Legends, and here he is next to some SH figure arts action figures, and finally next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. So overall, he's a very nice, very big and massive Grilly Grodd figure. I was really excited when I found out about him, saw the first pictures, and put my pre-order in. But I'm a little bit disappointed with the end result. I mean, it's a really nice figure. I'm not super fond of the head sculpt. What you can see of his head looks great, but I wish you could see more of it. And I do realize this is accurate to the comic. His articulation is a little bit limited. I'm just not really feeling the sort of armored look. It almost looks more like cloth on this figure. Accessories are non-existent, the sculpt and paint job are excellent, articulation is limited. If I to rate this guy, I'm teetering between a 6.5 and 7. Probably going to lean more toward a 7, this is a nice big, bulky, massive grod figure, and we really needed this in the McFarland line. So this is D Hunter, thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.